Hello and welcome to our next poem. We're going to be looking at static caker. Uh, however, just quick news is that all the books, all the grammar books are now available at CNA stores. So if you want a copy, if you haven't picked up a copy yet, if you're struggling with Afrikaans, uh, why are you still struggling? Why are you paying for extra lessons? Just just get these books. Uh, if you're in the high school, this is the one. Uh, this is a short version of the of the purple one. The cheat sheet's very short, and then there's also the kort verhaal gedachte of sommige That's for grade nine, ten, and eleven. Just to help you with those aspects. Okay, and then hopefully these videos will help a little bit with um, with the poetry. I'm gonna try to do all the poems for you. Cool. So looking at static, okay, I'll read the poem. And we'll uh, then go from there. You'll see in the purple I've got uh, trans some translations, uh, English translation of the poem, and then I have some notes. So this is really, I think, the valuable part will be the notes. Always compare it to the notes with your uh, that your teacher gave you. Um, and then also, uh, right, maybe what you can do is copy some of these notes onto the poem that you did in class. Um, and use it as revision and feel free to share it with um, people or your friends from other schools and so on. Sterk kijker, ek skryf a brief aan die man op die maan. Bladseie en bladseie vol. Ek rol dit in a koker op, punt dit aan a peil en skiet dit met a wilger boog dat het hoog die lucht in seil. Ek sien hoe dit dier die sterre trek in om die maan gaan draai en al verder dier die donker lig 'n duisend briewe saai nou wonder ek en wonder jy het hy ooit sy pos gekry of sou daar iemand anders wees wat al die briewe dalk nou lees okay so there is the english translation I write a message to the man on the moon, pages and pages full. Okay, I roll it into a quiver. That's that thing you store arrows in. Okay, baila. Bind it to an arrow. So the letter, the message goes into the quiver. The quiver gets tied to an arrow. Okay, it's different. And the bow is made out of willow willow tree wood. Okay, there's a reason for that. And then the whole quiver and the arrow is shot to the moon. Okay, it sails high into the sky. I see how it flies through the stars. However, it appears to be missing its target. It's going through the stars. Deer is through, hey. Okay, deer is there. In om die maan gaan, it goes around the moon. Okay, it gaan om die maan. Um, just there, just going back, there was Volgerboog. Okay, that's important. In al verder dier die donker lig, it goes through the dark sky. It appears to be missing everything and going um, around the moon rather than to the, uh, the man on the moon. And now it it turns into thousands of letters. Okay, so that one letter inside the quiver tied to the to the arrow is going around the moon and rains down or sows thousands of letters. Alright, we'll look at the meaning of this just now. Let's just get the, the mental picture of what's happening here. No vulnerac. Now I wonder, now I'm wondering, so now it's missed the target, now I'm thinking, now I'm wondering. Het hy ooit sy post gekry? Did he ever get his post or his mail? Did he ever get his mail? Did he get this letter, this pages and pages full? This man on the moon. Or, so dat iemand anders wees, could there be someone else? Okay, so that's mail. Could there be someone else? Iemand anders. But all the brieven know, yes. Could there be 
someone else now reading all these letters. Yeah, I must say the first time I read this, I uh, was a bit, a bit in the dark, but um, yeah, thinking about it, reading, reading a few interpretations. Um, thanks, Moira, for your notes. So, just went over those. It helped a lot. Um, what I thought we'd do is, is just get the sort of there's a layered meaning here. There's a hidden meaning that I think is very important for this poem. Um, and what we'll do is, is go through the, the notes very carefully yeah, that I made, but also try and uh, guess what they would aim uh, in terms of questions, what they would aim for, what they would ask in an exam or a test. Um, because I only get 10 marks per poem, so there's only so much they can ask. So let's let's see what they try and guess what they would shoot for. Um, it's actually not too much to this poem. Uh, so le let's let's see. It was written by um, a, a professor. Um, I forget the writer's name now. It was written by um, a professor, so she knows what she was doing. And some of the things are pretty sharp, I must say. When you, when you read it in context. Anyway, enough talking. So let's look at the title. Now here I'm going to use just a different color to, to highlight. Okay, so the title, Static Kijker, interesting title. They, they will definitely ask something there about the title. What is a Static Kijker? It's iemand wat die sterre bewonder means. Someone who admires the stars, who studies the stars, perhaps someone like an astronomer, astronom, okay, who's speaking in the poem, who's the ack, see there's the ack, who is this ack, okay, that is a tiener meisie, of a tiener sien, I, don't, um, I see in some of the interpretations, it says it's a girl, I don't see why it couldn't be a boy, uh, no, I don't see a, so it could be a tiner macy for tiner shien. I think we're pretty safe, safe there. Remember, all the poems are, are from teenagers, um, so it's the same for all the poems. It's sort of teenage issues and challenges, etc. Okay, so this I found fascinating. Um, well, the lack of meaning in it actually <laughs> fascinated me more. The man I thought I, I was thinking about song lyrics and all sorts of things, symbolism. And apart from, apart from people seeing, you know, sometimes they see faces, and, and shapes on the moon. Um, I should have pasted a picture here, but they they see a f the face in the moon. But it depends on where you're looking from, from the northern or the southern hemisphere. But on the surface of the moon, you can sometimes like make out a face. Um, apart from that, I, I don't really see too much um, symbolism. Um, I'm just going to put there the word symbolis, a symbolic, um, but just the symbolis, symbolic, symbolic. Um, what's symbolism here? Yeah. Not, not too much actually, apart from this. This is what I could establish pretty safely. I think you're safe if you say this. Uh, here it's, a, it's a figurative man. Okay. Traditionally or um, culturally, iemand met inzicht in perspective. Someone with insight and someone with perspective. So if you're speaking to the man on the moon, you're looking for answers, you're looking for perspe perspective, you're looking for insight. Whether it's, about your, it's typically about your problems. Okay, when no one else is there to listen, you speak to the moon, or you speak to the man on the moon. Okay, so I think ignore that part about the face in the moon. I see some uh, some some interpretations spoke about the face in the moon. It's not that. It's just a it's just a figurative man. It's just a, a symbolic meaning there. Um, this man on the moon could take on the um, identity of a loved one. So you could be speaking to an absent loved one, a friend, 
uh, and parent. Perhaps a, I see some interpretation say God, it's God. I don't think it's a bit narrow. I think um, it's more if you say someone that is a figurative man who gives you insight, perspective, and maybe gives you uh, answers or helps you to answer those questions yourself. Okay, so that's very important. There might not be more on there. Um, and this man on the moon never gets the message. He never gets the letter. There. Wonder if he ooit sy post gekry het. There. He never got the message. Okay, the man on the moon. He never got it. That's interesting. The quicker is an interesting one. Okay, that, that quiver keeps the arrows. So, most early hunter-gatherers would have had this, this quiver, the, the Red Indians, the Bushmen in South Africa. Um, remember the Nguni tribes were pretty much, they, they hunted with spears and didn't shoot arrows really. So the Bushmen were the only ones here in Southern Africa that hunted with, with arrows as far as I know or could read about. And they kept the, the arrows in a, in a quiver. Okay, and also just to tie in with this idea of the stars, the Bushmen also believed that their dead ones, so the Dwyas, uh, were now up in the sky, in the in the Yamoraim, up in the heavens and the stars somewhere. Okay. Uh, and I just said under Frua Yachkultira, other early uh, hunter um, hunter cult hunting cultures also used this this quiver. It's been used for apparently about six to seven thousand years. Um, people have been shooting arrows. Okay. Uh, this letter, it says Blatzea and Blatzea. There's a nice alliteration there with the B. The B, um, oh, sure, but I don't take a note of that. Um, so the beer, beer literacy. What's the function of that? It's a, it's a, um, a plof clunk. Okay, so it's a, got a, uh, not like this, plof clunk. Quite an explosive sound. Okay, um, that, what's the function of that? Uh, that would be the question. That's what I would ask. What's the function of the alliteration there? Uh, tough question. It's the draw by draw by dot d dringent date to the urgency dringent date fun d boodskap funny brief okay so it contributes to the urgency of this letter definitely i think if you say that you'll be you'll be fine so the b alliteration there there and there okay then he rolls up this letter doesn't fold it, he rolls it because the cover is round. Okay, that's why he doesn't fold it. Um, and he ties it to the arrow. Hang on. So let's go back to the blood say and blood say. So the blood say there, it's, it's a repetition, obviously. Okay, apart from the alliteration, it's a herhalen, blood sayer in blood sayer. It's a long letter. Um, why would someone write a long letter? Well, it's when the problem that they're writing about, the message, is large and complex and contains lots of detail. Okay, that's, that's why. Um, possibly, one click. This person has no one to talk to. Niemand om meer te praat nie. Niemand sal haar of hom verstaan nie. Nobody would understand. And perhaps as a teenager that's often the case. Problems seem large and complex and you feel that nobody, nobody will understand your unique circumstance, your unique problem. Cool. Um... Going on, the so this thing is rolled up. It's put in a in a quicker, almost like the 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 letter in a bottle 
in the sea. I said that that I got that from one of the interpretations. However, when you put a letter in a bottle in the sea, it's not directed at anyone in in particular, is it? Um, this letter is shot to a specific person on the moon. Um, so that is the difference there. This is specific person. It's not like a, le a letter in a bottle in the ocean that may never get found. Okay. So the quicker, interesting part there, the, the, the whole quiver then gets shot with the arrow to the heavens. Now, to me, this shows advice that this is an important message because what your quiver is possibly uh, one of your most valuable um, assets as a hunter, as an early hunter, because where would you store your arrows if you don't have a quiver? So it just shows that this message is very important. Okay, it's it's so important that you sacrifice your whole quiver. To shoot this message into the sky. Okay, base dot d wordscap buyer belongrik as skit. Uh, let's just do that. Skit d yella quicker weg. Shoot the shoot away the whole uh, cover. Okay, now something that I would definitely um, go for. Is this the the Volcher? And I think this wasn't a past IB paper. Um, see, Volcher book. It's made out of willow. So apart from the willow tree being mystical and the typical romantic, um, the romantic tree. It's missing an N there. Um, this is what they will be after. They'll want to ask you why a willow tree, and you say it's very strong and very. Beigbar. Beigbar is um, bendable. It's flexible. Okay, flexible and strong. That's the kind of thing you want if you want you're making a a long bow. Flexible, strong wood. So apart from that, they could they could ask you what it symbolizes. The really tough question though. But they, I've I've seen them do this. Um, it refers to stability. Stabilität, innerliche Kraft, inner strength, okay, and balance. Coincidentally, also something that the moon would uh, symbolize. So, if you often in pictures you see the willow tree and then the moon sort of hanging in the branches of the of the willow tree um, on Pinterest and those sort of things, you get that sort of art. The willow and the moon often go together. It's because they symbolize the same thing. And they sort of go well together in art as well. So I found that quite interesting. Um, so again, I just said variance again, variance is again, this idea of insight and perspective and challenges. All right, so again, um, just like the other poems, there's uh, many challenges that this narrator, spreker, it's not the dichter, I don't say the dichter this, the dichter that, it's the spreker, okay. Alright, then this message goes, hi, wuch in die lich, okay, wuch in die lich in sail, it would imply a successful shot, successful squid, die boodskap is gestuur, the message has been sent, it's going, it's sailing like a ship, high into the into the to the air again the, the link between the ocean and the and the and space we had the bottle now we have the, the sort of sh uh, ship image coming up here i don't think that's important though surely not surely they won't ask that okay um now it's but now we see okay so you see is it stretching through the stars dear not doesn't hit the star, it goes through the stars. Um, yeah, practically, realistically, it wouldn't work, however, but this whole thing is figurative. Uh, the moon comes before any of the stars. But um, 
now it goes around the moon it almost goes into orbit like the it's orbiting around the moon omni mandra it misses okay the lake yeah i said omni mandra here we go um the lake of the words cup say taken miss in omni mandra dear the star through the stars okay and then it turns into thousands of letters okay so by the stage the reader should be wondering well if it turns into thousands of letters is this a good thing or is this a bad thing is this a good outcome or a bad outcome um i can't help feeling that this is a terrible outcome um that it's missed its target and now there's no ways you can control thousands of letters and who reads it and where your letters go um I'm sure you're guessing by now what what I'm trying to trying to hint at is that I think we we try we we starting to head towards a, a bigger metaphor here, greater metaphor, one of um, one where it's something like a social media message that's gone out or um, and it's gone viral and it's spread around and it can't be taken back misses its target the intended person uh, and someone else picks it up and makes it go viral um, that i don't know i don't know if it's a bit of a stretch but it seems like that certainly um okay let's go on you can decide for yourself as well okay so thousands of letters that uh, no wonder okay now i'm wondering and you must be wondering yes we are wondering as the reader the i said the in wonder yay the lesser word direct angesprek we are being addressed directly like yeah i'm sure you're wondering too the the reader i'm sure you're wondering what um if you ever got the message okay it that would say post okay that you ever get his mail and just the use of the word mail to me um yeah it was a letter and now it's mail the mail is so it's, it sounds like a i mean an email did you get your mail if we say today did you get your mail uh, most of the time we may, we mean email we don't mean did you get your, the letter i sent you in the post okay or your did you get your light water and light bill or whatever um we mean Yepos, okay. Um, I'm just going to enter that there, just so you have it on uh, record. <laughs> Don't know if we're stretching this too far. Check it with your teacher, please. Um, it like me if you mind with the brief. I'm just going to say the yepos, yepos, um, social media boardscope. But I would certainly teach this in class. I'd be comfortable too. Uh, yeah, post social media words cup. Okay, it looks like he never got the letter. This pages and pages long letter. Sensitive personal information. Okay. The person by the perspective. So I'm just saying here, yeah, the person that was supposed to give the perspective the gemoedsris is peace of mind the insight never ontvang received the letter you see yeah uh, now it that would say post gekry of so dat iemand anders wees would there be someone else would there be someone else that's now reading the letter see other means the yes no the words cup other people are now reading the message who are these other people that are in space it just becomes sort of obvious that we're talking about cyber space because who who would pick up a letter if there's only one man on the moon in space who's reading this letter okay 
this is not a good outcome. It's not a good result. This uitslag is a result or an outcome. The brief was long and personal. The letter was long, very personal, uh, obviously discussing something very personal. Now it is all the brief. Now everybody's reading this letter. The brief, the arrow, missed its taken, its target, missed its target. Okay. So yeah, here's my uh, conclusion. Therefore, maybe the poem is a is a metaphor, a metaphor for a message, a boodskap that viral gegaan het, that went out of control. Okay, by the beer. You can't pull those things back. Once, you know, you get these talks at school. Once you've posted something online it is permanent okay you can't retract it ever it's gone it's uh, you won't see it again if it's photos and things like that so we must be so so careful just like the guy shooting this arrow you're not going to see your arrow or your quiver or your letter ever again it's gone into space okay and it's turned into thousands of letters in space so it's gone okay so yeah space i'm just saying there space equals Cyberspace. In Afrikaans you'll say the Rain, so the heavens, is gelijk on the Kiberheim. Perhaps that's an interpretation. Um, if your teacher is not comfortable with that, then that's fine. I'm sure you can get enough out of the poem otherwise. Okay, so there's no rhyme scheme here. Okay, that fits well. Remember, you can't just say, oh, there's no rhyme scheme. There's Freya Fash. Freie vers, free vers. Um, there's no real structure, structuur, there's geen structuur. Why though? Why does that fit in with the message of the poem? Well, the, the message spread quite chaotically uh, without structure, without any ability to rein it in, as it were. Okay, there's no order. So, boodskap, verspreid is spread. Chaotis, that's how you spell it. You say chaotis, chaotically. All right, so the message is gone. So at first I must say I didn't really like the poem, but after digging a bit and then uh, looking at the different layers, uh, it does look like there is something to it. So, um, so well done to the poet there. I think it's one of the one of the better ones. Um, just so much to to unpack. Uh, what is the the theme of the poem? Well, the theme is um, sometimes a message falls in the wrong hands, and there's nothing you can do about it. Or sometimes you you don't get the help that you need uh, with a problem. You cry nie the help that you need get nie. Boodskappen fall in verkeerde handen. So let's just quickly write a note there. Gemma Boodskap fall in som fall soms, sometimes in verkeerde handen. Um, soms kry ons nie hulp in perspective nie. sometimes we don't get help we don't get answers we don't get any perspective um, the man on the moon evidently never got the message or if he did it was via the grapevine or via the, the viral um, vine that um, happened online. Okay, that is Sterrekeker. Next we'll look at Stan Op. And uh, you can also download some of the other poems, Strelitzia and those things. I'm going to try to do all of them for you. Hope it helps. And um, we'll stay tuned. We'll, we'll chat soon. Remember, the books are available at CNA. Please get a book. Okay, bye.